Hi, welcome back to Lincoln's Creations and Rentals. My name's Philip, and today we're going through how I built this crosscut sled. So please join me for the ride. Let me know if you have any comments or questions, and we'll get right to it. The first thing we need to do is cut our sled to size. I ended up going with 22 inches by 32 inches. Next, what we have to do is cut the pieces for our fence. For this, I ended up cutting three pieces four inches tall and three pieces three inches tall. I ended up going just a, a hair higher so that we can trim them to the exact size we need later. We highly recommend sanding down each piece of the fence before you glue them together. Glue each set of the fence pieces together. We highly recommend using tight bond wood glue. We usually use tight bond number two. And we highly recommend clamping those fence pieces to a level such as the one you see in the video, just to ensure that the fences are completely straight as they dry. The next step is to mount the miter bars as shown to the bottom of the sled base. We used some washers we had laying around just to raise these miter bars up just over the top of the table saw, then used regular old super glue so that we could attach the sled base to those miter bars before we fully affix them using screws. We completed affixing those miter bars to the bottom of our sled pre-drilling some small holes through to the bottom. Then we flipped it over and burrowed out a nice countersunk hole using our Forstner bits. Then went back in, drilled out the remaining hole with the screw associated with the miter bar itself. We happen to be using a Rockler adjustable miter bar. We do know Home Depot sells one from Powertech that is very similar. If you ha happen to have a table saw like ours, the DW745 from DeWalt, we highly recommend just using a three quarter inch T-Track as the miter bar as opposed to these more expensive adjustable ones. We decided to use our Ryobi trim router and a quarter round bit to round off the sides of our sled base. Then we sanded that down just to be sure it was nice and clean for when we're grabbing it and moving it around the shop. At this point, we did a quick test by raising the blade of the table saw up just enough near the middle of the sled 
to see where it lined up. Be sure not to go through the whole sled until the fences have been attached. We then prepared the fences by chiseling out any of the loose glue from our glue up and then took it over to the table saw and trimmed it to size. After that, we run, ran over to the miter saw and trimmed them to the appropriate length. For us, it was roughly 32 inches. Once the fences are cut to size, sand them down one last time and make sure to add a chamfer along the front edge of the back fence facing the blade. This is gonna help catch any sawdust and anything as you cut to make sure you have straight cuts. We decided to give our back fence a little more style by trimming out a nice angle on the top of each end and then later routing and sanding it down. Later on in the video, you'll see we actually went even further and carved out sort of an opening to sort of reduce the weight on the back fence and the back of the sled. So we don't have part of that video on here of how I cut that out, but you'll see it later on. To spruce up our sled, we decided to add two tracks on the bottom of the sled for use in our hold downs. As you can see, we only went about 16 of the 22 inch depth of the track so we could still get the bolt used for the hold down in despite our back fence potentially being in the way. We've seen other people do this where they cut a slot to the back fence and that would have to be pretty large to get some of those bolts through. So we thought just coming up a little short would be a lot better. We also decided to run a T-track across the top of our front fence for use in stop blocks. So as you can see here, we're running it through the router right around the middle of the fence through that middle piece of three quarter inch plywood, the depth necessary for the T-track. At this point, you can install the fences front and back. For the back fence, drill, countersink, and install at least four screws, two on each side of where the blade will run through. For the front fence at this time, only install two screws, one pivot point near one end and affix the other end with one screw. You'll need this so you can adjust and make sure it's square later. At this time, you can run the blade to the entire table saw sled. We also took the time to do some routing and sanding of the front fence just to make it easier to handle. Before you move on to the next step of fixing a safety area for the blade, be sure to use the five cut method to align your sled at a perfect 90 degree angle to the table saw blade.
we used some scrap one by four, our brad nailer, and some pocket screws to affix a safety block behind the blade so that as we pass through the surface of our work product, we have a few more inches to catch the rest of the blade and not catch our fingers. We also spray painted this red just to be sure.